You still remember how to work those cameras? <laughs> Barely. Where's the focus knob again? Where have we been? We've missed you all. It's been way too long. I think four or five weeks. I know. It's the longest it's been in years. So why have we quit YouTubing? Why don't we have a boat? It certainly hasn't been for a lack of trying. While we haven't been publishing videos, we have been on the boat search. In this video, we're going to detail some of those boats as best we can with a slight glimmer of hope. There could be a boat for us coming soon. We'll see about that, but we're also going to talk about why the market has been so challenging for us. We're on a plane again. I can't wait to get on a plane again. This is trip to the Bay Area number three to look at some boats. These are the final contestants <laughs> on the O'Kelly Price is Right. One of them is going to be in the boat. Otherwise, we're going to go get a farm and a couple dogs. Some chickens and some goats. <laughs> Maybe some cats. <laughs> Thank you all for hanging tight with us. We really appreciate your support. And I know it's been a long process. So hopefully uh, we'll have some really good news this week. All right, we just got to SFO. It's sunny and we're gonna see a boat tomorrow. Looking forward to it. I think there's potential. Nick thinks it's a five to 10% chance. We'll see. Oh, Beat you with the battle. like a battle. Thank you. You better be nice. Jim, thanks for setting us up. Of yes. Course. We love oh, having you. I guess we're gluttons for punishment. This is old Uchermare number five. five or six. Lucky number five. Yeah. You know, if you look strictly at the numbers, this one's got the right, the right mix. Um, it's a pretty spare boat or, or minimalist, I guess you'd say. But they are getting long in the tooth. So the, the upgrades and the maintenance that's been done along the way, it really matters with a boat like this. Mm -hmm. That boom is cracked. The mass has been sleeved. That means there's an interior section that's been used to join two pieces together. This one at least has new engines. You know, it looks like they spent some money along the way to make the cockpit feel more modern. That if you want to do with it what we want to do with it, you've got you got some money to spend. It's There's just no ifs, ands, or buts. What do you think about it? I think the working on it for a year is, um, that's pretty much a huge bummer. All right, we're going back to see the fancy boat, the luxury liner. I saw it last night, met the couple, and they're just really cool. Totally hit it off with them. And yeah, we had some time and they had some time, so we're gonna see it again. So what do you think about this boat? Oh, I think it's a really cool boat. I like it a lot. It's uh, just really expensive, so I'm not sure I can get my head around it. <laughs> yes, it's kind of a forever home. Um, it's the kind of boat you think you could have for 20 years. That's interesting. Really pretty. Wow. I'm kind of, I'm kind of blown away. I, I really like that boat. That boat looks ready to go. Yeah, it's gorgeous. There's definitely this issue of, you know, what's the right price? I think there was this big run up in prices with COVID. This is a COVID boat. They bought it during COVID. And so now that the market's softening, everybody's kind of on unsteady ground. I mean, how do you find comps? How do you decide what this boat is really worth? It's a pretty specialized boat. It's, there's not a lot of them out there. There's not a big market for them because it's so big and complex. And it's, you know, it's a performance category boat, but I would not call this a high performance boat. Right, it's so big and heavy. It's a Cadillac. That's, Cadillac. that's what it is. <laughs> The Fancy Pants boat was awful tempting, but if you're gonna spend that much money, you should probably get exactly what you want. 
and we really are looking for more performance-oriented boat. Out of nowhere, something rather interesting popped up on the market, so we headed to L.A. We've flown in and out of LAX dozens of times over the years, and I am absolutely blown away every single time by just how many people live in Southern California. It's kind of crazy. All right, is this the one? Is this the day? I mean, I want to say this is it, or it's nothing, but I don't know how many times I've said that. And there's a boat next to you says, just kidding. <laughs> yeah. We're in Newport Harbor, Newport Beach. One owner, he had a built for himself 20 years ago. It's certainly a far cry from what we just looked at in the San Francisco Bay Area. This is, this is minimal. This is, I don't want to say it's camping, but this is minimal. Um, but the big question is going to be condition. This guy, like everybody else, wants a lot of money for the boat. And if it's in good condition, yeah, we'll go that way. I think it's a bad sign he's rowing in. Oh, <laughs> great. This boat ticks all of our boxes. It would work just fine for us with a bit of elbow grease. We made the gentleman an offer and... He accepted. Now, you longtime viewers, you know why we're not revealing the boat. And it's not to build anticipation. We don't want to jinx it. I think this really could be the one. I know I've said that before, but I think this is... Once it. or twice. Yeah. I hope this is the one as well. But is this boat really for sale? That's been something that we've come up against time and time and time again. It seems like a lot of the boats we've looked at are for sale only if the seller can get that really high price. Yeah, and they've told us to our faces, if I can't get my price, I'll just keep it. You guys might remember the Chris White Atlantic 55 that we went to look at in Mexico last summer. Well, Chris wasn't very flexible on price and maybe it's because he wanted to keep sailing it. In fact, right now, He's sailing it to the South Pacific. How about that one in Australia we looked at? The guy didn't even want us to make an offer. Yeah, we said, hey, can we make an offer? He said, no, 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 don't even make an offer. I may just keep the boat. Then he has. I like the one you called it. You said, you know what? I bet this guy is only has it on the market because his wife wants it. In fact, when we went to look at the boat, he said exactly that. I'm happy to keep sailing through the summer. It's my wife who wants to sell it. Could I get her email? <laughs> There was a boat in New Zealand that we did a video walk through and the guy said, yeah, I haven't even registered it. I just bought it. It's kind of for sale, but I'm headed to Fiji if it doesn't sell. How about that one that's advertised for sale in New Zealand and the boat's actually on a tiny atoll in French Polynesia and he's not even on it. Yeah, he's not even gonna be there for like four months. So astronomical asking price. He's not even at the boat. You can't even get to the boat. I mean, is that boat really for sale? <laughs> I say no. So what is going on here? We know there's a lot of craziness in the world, but why are there boats on the market that aren't really for sale? What do you think's going on here? Let's face it, boats are an emotional purchase and an emotional thing to sell. Let's look at some market psychology. Now let's talk about the market cycle of emotions. We could just as easily call this the emotions during the market cycle. Regardless, emotions play a big part in markets. We didn't make any of this stuff up. It's straight out of the economics textbooks. We're talking about boats, but you could apply this to any market. Absolutely. The same emotional train applies to Bitcoin and real estate, tulips back in the day, or catamarans. The first stage is excitement over this really cool new thing. As more buyers enter the market, the prices go up, leading to the next stage, which is FOMO, fear of missing out. Can we find the right boat? There's hardly any available. And the result, prices go higher yet. Eventually, most of the people who think that Bitcoin is heading to a million or the perfect catamaran is gonna take them around the world, 
Well, most of those people buy what they're looking for. This leads to complacency, where sellers believe that prices will continue to stay high. But there just aren't as many buyers in the market. This is where denial sets in, and some sellers get left behind. Those who need to sell, sell for just a bit less. But those who don't need to sell, hang on, thinking that prices are still as high as they were just a bit ago. Eventually, a bit of fear sets in that prices will continue to fall. If the market gets bad enough, a bit of panic sets in, followed by anger and depression as prices bottom out. Eventually, the clouds part and the cycle begins again with hope and optimism returning. So the question is, where are we right now? We think that we're somewhere between complacency and outright denial. Prices on some boats have come way down, while inventory is increasing. Sellers were asking near $700,000 for a Sea Win 1260. Now they're being cut down into the mid 500s. At last count, there were eight Outremer 51s for sale. A year ago, it was hard to find even one for sale. Of course, markets are way, way more complicated than this. Yeah, forecasting economies is even more complicated than forecasting the weather. How low will it go? We don't know. That's right. No panic or anger and depression yet. But also, we're falling well short of hope and optimism, at least on the global stage. Listen, we are looking for a boat, but we certainly don't want the market to crash. Because if the market crashes, that means that things are probably pretty bad everywhere. And nobody wants that. But we do think that there is a cycle to these things and boat prices have overshot the demand for those boats. So we're at this point of possible turning some denial. We just want that one boat that'll do it for us and we can sail off into the sunset. Hopefully we're almost there. There is one other reason we haven't been making videos. If you saw our last video, you saw that I was dealing with some skin cancer, some basal cell cancer near my eye. Unfortunately, I am not out of the woods with that procedure and some other issues that have cropped up. Yeah, so we've had our hands full dealing with life outside of boat shopping. We'll continue to film and document as best we can, hopefully with some good news coming your way in the next couple of weeks. As always, a huge thank you. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for sticking with us through this trying process for us. Huge thank you to the patrons. Yes, thank you. You guys are sticking with us. Thank you. Take care, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. significant significant for us because this is where we first went offshore on our big cruising boat back in the day and it felt like such a big deal to go like 20 something miles from the Golden Gate stymied again the trail down to the lighthouse the Point Reyes lighthouse is closed for no for no apparent reason so we've been coming here for Years. Never done the hike. <laughs> Shut out again this time. Here, you distract. June's distracting her. Why don't you just hop the fence? Yeah, June's your talking to her. <laughs> Nobody. How will they know? How will they know? They won't know. How would they know? Just do it. I'll pretend like I'm filming you. Just go down, go along the side here.